everybody. Welcome to Tiger Talk. I'm Ted Wright. Today, class of 1996, Mike Fitzsimmons from Crosscheck is joining us. Super excited, straight from Silicon Valley. Mike, say hello. Hey there. Hey, how you doing, man? I am awesome. And I got to just tell you, I was class of 95. If I'd made it to 96, which my parents thought I was going to, uh, I probably wouldn't be sitting here. <laughs> Uh, and this just in for Mike's mother. No, he got out in 95. We were done paying. Yes. I see your mother and my mother know each other. Yeah. There you go. I actually called. Go. I Guys, I liked Hamden Sydney so much that I actually called my mom at the end of my senior year and said, hey. And she said, you could stay for as long as you want. Do you know how much it costs a year? And I was like, I don't. She's like, well, you will. So there's, I only have one more payment, and then that's it. There you go. So great, Mike. Welcome. Thank you very much. Glad to, glad, super glad to have you here. So, you know, we were talking about the 90s. So tell us what was high school like for you? And, uh, you know, so like where, where, is, where were you in high school? And what was it like? You know, I, I had an, a, almost an awfully predictable journey getting to Hampton, Sydney. Um, I went to high school in Richmond, Virginia at St. Christopher's, which was also an all-male uh, private high school. So it, it, that, that transition for me was not, not as abrupt as may, maybe it is for, for some. In terms of what it was like, you know, it, I, I, St. Christopher's was awesome. I mean, one of the great things about St. Christopher's was you, you were required to play three sports. I'm an athlete. I love it all. And so that was a very cool thing. It's a very good balanced program. Cool. And so so you got choices. St. Chris is a great school in Richmond. So why Hamden Sydney? So I, I, as part of my challenge, personally, right, as not being a great student, I needed small. I needed to get in, learn what I needed to learn, have a good time, but get out in, in four years and get on. And, and I was pretty anxious to get into the business world. I was kind of an entrepreneur at heart, always had been. Uh, and so I, I needed a platform like that that would help set me up for the, the next phase of my, of my life. So when did you first know you were an entrepreneur? Uh, I think when I was eight. And, and I just, I recently did an interview on this and the question was asked and I said, look, I, I, I'm one of those, I believe that entrepreneurs are, are born not, I'm not sure whether they're born or whether they're built, but I was for sure born. So I was always doing something. My first one was picking blackberries and selling them door to door in my, in my neighborhood. And then I had a long business like everybody else did. And I just kind of went from there. Yeah, you know what? I'll tell you what's funny that you say that too. And I, I often, I often, when I think about hiring and I'm in the hiring business now, not to jump forward, we'll, we'll come to that later. But I do want to say one, one anecdote on that front. And I, and I, I see it so much with folks around, you know, being overly thoughtful, uh, especially when they choose their institution and the brand of their institution and all that stuff. And, you know, there, there was a great um, analysis on, I think it was McKinsey that did it, where they looked at what are the, what are the, what is the greatest predictor of future success? And the thing that was at the top of the list, it wasn't, did you go to Harvard? It wasn't, did you get an MBA? It was, did you have a job in high school, right? And I just, I, I bring that up because I've always thought that that is such a tell. If you're going to get after it and you're a worker and you're a grinder, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. you're going to find your way, my, my point of view. Tell us about the social life at Ham City, particularly a question that I get a lot, like, dude, it's guys there. What's up with the girls? Like, so, so did you live a very monastic life there, uh, Mike Fitzsimmons at Hamden Sydney? Yeah, look, we had plenty of fun. And I, and I think, as I said earlier, I was well trained for this coming from, from St. Christopher's, which was an all, all male Episcopal high school. Talk to us a little bit. We see in the back cross check. So, you're CEO of this. So, tell us about cross check. Yeah, so this is my third sort of real entrepreneurial venture in terms of being a venture backed tech company. Um, this one is uh, a couple years old. Um, our business is around um, helping companies make better hiring decisions and using artificial intelligence and cloud data to do so. Um, I, that the idea for Crosscheck was born out of my own personal experiences in prior companies. I think I've hired over 1,500 people uh, over the last 20 years or whatever it is. And, and I just concluded through that, that, that the, the systems are just broken and companies still don't have the right tools to make sure that hiring decisions they make end up being great quality hires. So you jumped right into the corporate world from Hamden, Sydney, no like Mick job, no barely above a name tag, just like him, Sydney had you ready and you were there. Let's go. And I, you know, look, I was jealous of the guys driving out to Aspen for the summer and I was jealous of all of that, but I was also like, let's go, I'm ready. Let's get, let's let it rip, you know? And, and so I think I started work, I don't know when we graduated, but it was within a month of graduation. I was 
at my desk with my tie on and ready to rock. So tell me about, so you've had adventures in the clothing space. You've had other tech ventures. What's besides, of course, Crosscheck is awesome. But what's the other one? You're like, man, that was great. I love doing that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the, the, the first company I actually started was probably the coolest and most relatable company. It was a company called Delivery Agent. And it was a company we grew. I ran it for over 10 years. We grew it to about 200 million in revenue. And it was really a, a relatable concept. And it was all this, co this idea of enabling consumers to buy products they see while they're watching movies and TV shows. Okay. So it was inspired by, I'm watching Ocean's Eleven, Brad Pitt's wearing these cool Ray-Ban sunglasses. How do I buy them? And we were simply connecting the dots between the content and the commerce. And so we were really, I have patents that I've been awarded around, you know, this concept of T-commerce or contextual commerce. And it was just a cool one because, again, I didn't know anything from anything. And I had to go down to Hollywood and do deals with all the main studios, which I went and figured out. And then also figure out how to connect the dots and all that good stuff. So that was a really good journey and, and, and something I just, I got, to, I got to do some really cool things and get exposed to some really, really cool parts of the world. All right, so we're all, we're right here at halftime and the conversation, thanks Mike, this has been really great. So let's play a little game uh, that's, you know, let's just play, we call it rapid fire. And so are you ready to play? Let's go. All right, excellent. So Golden State, the 49ers or the Sharks? I've got neither. None of them. All right, so what is your team? Uh, I, this is, this is going to be annoying, but I'm a Steelers fan, a Celtics fan and a Warriors fan. Okay. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Nike or Adidas? Nike. All right. Hoodie or a vest? I mean, what's what's up with the valley? It's a push. It's a push. <laughs> oh, that is <laughs> that is a lazy answer. I mean, the judge. I hear. Wait, the judges are not accepting that. You have to make a choice. You have to make a decision. Hoodie or vest? Vest. All right. There it is. Pizza or tacos? Pizza. Beach or mountain? Beach. Mountain Dew or Dr. Pepper? Mountain Dew, but not with conviction. No, I meant Mountain Dew, but not, I believe, isn't that the name of their next new flavor, right? <laughs> they did the melon thing for the Super Bowl and their next flavor is gonna be Mountain Dew. <laughs> what is the, what's the one thing that everybody watching this should know about Hamden Sydney that is super important to you? Yeah, I, I think that it, it, it you know, the, the, the inputs and the outputs, we oftentimes get trained to believe that it's completely binary. And I think we get trained to think that if I go to Harvard, my output is going to be X. And if I go to something below Harvard, my output is going to be Y. And I just think it's completely BS. I really, truly do. I think mean, you, you are you and you control your destiny. And when you're prioritizing where you're going to go for your education, that needs to line up with what your objectives are. In my case, my objective was to get a great education. I wanted to major in economics. I wanted to have fun, but I wanted to get out in four years and go get, get after it. Right. And so for me, it was the perfect match for that. And as I said to you earlier, I think that I would have potentially gotten lost at other places. And I think that it wasn't, you know, other places wouldn't have been the right match for me. But for me at that phase in my life and for where I was trying to get to, it was the perfect match for me. So this illusion then that you also, once you go there to Hamden Sydney, you're kind of are handcuffed to go be a lawyer or a doctor or a wealth manager in the Southeast. Although those are great, great, great professions. And all of my friends, I have plenty of my friends that are in those businesses. It's not the only thing you can go do, right? And that's the that's the important thing. And especially the age we're entering into, you want to go get the knowledge. You want to go get the experience. You want to get the relationships. And then it's up to you in any of these situations. You got to go make it happen. So I think that's, you know, for me, that was the formula and that worked. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes total sense. So everybody, this has been Tiger Talk with Mike Spick Simmons, class of 95, CEO of Internet and Silicon Valley darling Crosscheck. Mike, thanks for being with us here today. This has been really, really illuminating. All right, guys, thanks so much for the time.